we're ready to survive in advance on the Rooly Crew Sports Network. Survive in advance is brought to you by Replenishing Care to Future Roof Sports Medicine. To find out more about Replenishing Care and all the products they offer, go to thegruelytruth.net and click on the banner at the top of the page. I am your co-host for Survive in Advance, Mike Goodpaster, and right now I'd like to welcome in my co-host, a member of the 1981 Indiana Hoosier National Basketball Team. Um, the position he played was usually sitting on the bench, and somehow he parlayed that into you know, pulling the wool over people's eyes and getting into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Help me welcome to the show the second lady scorer in Lawrence Central history, Steve Risley. Wow. It's just okay. It's like happy Halloween to you too, buddy. God. Well, I brought know. up all your accomplishments and your st- I'm one. not the second leading scorer in, Indian, in Lawrence Central history. I'm the first Are leading scorer. Are you third scorer. now? I'm first. And I did it in three years, what Kyle Guy took four years to do. So what you're saying is Kyle Guy was good enough to start as a freshman, though. No. As, as, I, as I approached Lawrence Central about that record, they said, that, well, we consider Kyle Guy to be the all-time leading scorer in the modern era. <laughs> that is even worse, but, Steve. Like 1977 was not the modern era. <laughs> it wasn't, oh, I tell you, you what, you do realize in your fantasy world it may have not, it may have been the modern era, but for normal people it was 41 years ago. I know. Is that hard to believe? 41 years ago? Jeez, I know. Was I alive 41 years ago? That's amazing. Yeah, you were alive. You were Absolutely like 35. Amazing. And in your senior year of ah, high school. <laughs> I know. Hey, I was on a life plan. What can I say? All uh, right. What do, you uh, do, what do you dress up as for Halloween? Come on, it's Halloween. You didn't dress up in a costume? I'm in no. costume. That's the devil's holiday. I don't believe in the devil's holiday. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm going as Caitlyn Jenner. So you're going as yourself? Yeah, I know. You know what to say. I need a haircut. That's for sure. Yeah. So, Mike, I got to tell you, I, before we get started, I heard some incredibly distressing news this morning. I wake up, and it looks to me like keeping up with the Kardashians is going to be canceled. I didn't know it was still on, Steve. Yeah, it is. I mean, they they changed their direction, and it's not taken well. I think Kanye has finally gotten to them, and it's looking like the show is going to get canceled. So what, what am I going to do, do then? I mean, because I know you basically just uh, sit around and watch old reruns of the Kardashians when it's not, you know, new anyway. So I'm going to have to get into one of the here? Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, no doubt. Yeah, but you already watch that. And you watch Dancing with I the know. Stars. You watch all the girly shows. Um, <laughs> and I would claim that you can't claim it's because of your wife, because your wife's probably tougher than you are. So I... I think you're probably forcing your wife to watch these shows against her will. Uh, she sleeps them anyway. She likes Outlander. Whatever that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. It's a big week, though. House of Cards starts this week. Never seen it. I know. It's one of those. It's Netflix. And the problem with those shows are you, you, they, they, binge, they binge you. So you get all 10 episodes, like, Friday. So by midnight on Friday, I'll have all 10 episodes watched. And that's the end of that series. So I'm done know, today. We know what you do since you've retired. You watch way too much TV. I've, I've watched more sports than I have anything in the world. Do you ever think about, you know, just like playing Fortnite or playing video games or something, just to give you something you know, I, more diverse? You know, I, I cannot play video games. I, I, I am a total moron at video games. See, I, I used I to be able to play friend. video games until they got this new stuff out. And then they got this Call of Duty game like eight or nine years ago, and it looked cool. And I, I went to play it. And, you know, it's not like the old Atari or even the old Nintendo where you could just push one button at a time. Because my sons are on there like, oh, you got to push this A and this B to shoot that. And then you can throw a grenade if you hit yeah. the R1 and the R at the same time. And I'm yeah. like, I can't remember all that. And number two, I don't have quick enough reaction time to push that many buttons that quickly. So then I'll just I, lose, and then I don't like to lose. So I'm in your camp. I tried to take my son on when he was about 12 years old on one of these shoot up games, and I'm just like, he's just pounding away left and right on this remote, and I don't, I have no rhyme or reason to what he's doing, and all I know is every two seconds, I'm dying. 
I'm laying on the ground in a blood pool. And, and so he bought me like uh, Jack Nicholas golf and, and Grand Prix racing. And I crashed on every turn. And I, my handicap on Jack Nicholas golf was like a 43. <laughs> so I said, that's the end of my uh, video game career. And I've never tried to play video games. All right. I just, I, I have no apathy for it. All right, but I'm done shooting the crap with you. It's time to get to the college football playoff committee. Um, first poll came out, yes. I, I don't think that there were too many surprises. Um, the thing that I do think that is a little messed up is when you look at this, I think Clemson deserves to be number one. Um, so that's my first question. Who should be number one to you, Steve? No, I think Alabama. They're defending Why? national champions. That's, that's they're, 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 they won the national championship last year. That doesn't mean they're going to win it this year. And Clemson has done more. Clemson's beaten three top 25 teams. Alabama's beaten nobody. I, you know, I, I, I can't take it away from Alabama until they get beat. I don't like the fact that they but do that. But what does last I, year have to do with this year? I just think Alabama is the best college football program in the United States of America. I think they got the best coach. I'm not saying I'm a Saban fan. I'm not saying I'm an Alabama fan. I just think time and time again, they are on top. They're on top right now. They haven't been challenged, but they haven't been tested either. Nobody's even really come close to beating them. They've got a couple big games coming up. They're going to play LSU. Uh, Mississippi State's going to give them a, a, a run. And then Auburn, they got three three of their hardest games are probably coming up, um, and we'll see. But who, I, who are those three happens, hardest games again? Well, LSU is ranked fourth in the country. Mississippi State's ranked twenty first, and Auburn is no longer ranked. But Auburn, it, it's an emotional game. It's like Indiana Purdue. You throw everything out the door when Indiana plays Purdue, um, or Ohio State plays Michigan. When Auburn and Alabama play, you throw it out the door. It's an emotional game. A game that game makes Auburn a season if they beat Alabama, knock them out. If, if Alabama loses that game, they're, they're likely to be out of the playoffs. Yeah, I, I still don't see what that has to do with what they're going to play. I, I, think right, Mike, I, I, I think you're right, Mike. Mike, I think you're right. I think you're right intellectually, but I think emotionally, Alabama is going to stay number one. And these polls are done with the most. I, I personally don't think Notre Dame is a top five basketball team. I, I think we're just waiting for them to lose a game, and, and it will happen. And it could I don't think Brian Kelly is a good enough coach to get them undefeated throughout the year. Um, you know, Alabama or LSU and Alabama have to play each other. It's going to knock one of those two teams out. It may not knock Alabama out, but it, it will knock the LSU out. I, I think I think the sleeper team in here right now in the top five is Michigan. I just think. You know, I don't think they have a very – got to get to Ohio State, and then they've got probably going to have to end up playing um, – who do we say was leading the other side right now? Uh, right now it's Northwestern. Northwestern, yeah, which I think they can handle Northwestern. In Indianapolis, it's on a neutral field. Mm-hmm. So, I, I say but Alabama. I, how I would, much does beating I would vote, Northwestern my, my vote, do If I had a vote, I would go with Alabama as number one until they're beaten. I just okay. think they, they've earned the ranking. They stayed up there. How did they earn yeah, it? The bowl, they've played nobody. They've beaten everybody. They've played nobody. Well, the, 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 I see. I, it goes back to just a different thought process and mentality. Well, yeah, because I don't understand why so last huge. year has any effect on this year. I mean, there are eight games some, into this but, year and they're undefeated. Yeah, there against nobody. And they're undefeated. Against nobody. The best team they've beaten. They're is Texas playing A&M. SEC football. They beat Texas wow. A&M, which they are, was yeah, a ranked big deal. So did Clemson. Clemson beat them at Texas A&M. Sure. Too. Yeah, I I don't have a beat okay. for Clemson. I think it's a likely. You I obviously right. do because you just said that you don't think they've done as much as Alabama this year. I just said I think Alabama has no reason to be taken out of the number one slot as long as they keep winning. Well, how do and you take them good. out of the number one slot? Because why would they be in it? You there beat is no them. number Somebody one slot. They, they there, won. Last 14, night was the first. Seven. Wait a second. Seven. That's stupid. To 23. Yeah, again, to 14, tell me the teams 55. they beat. They're killing tell everybody me the teams they playing. beat. Tell me the teams they beat. 
They beat Louisville, which <laughs> is a shitty team. You know, okay. This year they're, they are below five hundred. Mississippi's always a, it's an SEC Oh yeah, school. Mississippi's Texas always good. Where school. are they ranked? Uh, L.A. Lafayette didn't L.A. Lafayette produce uh, Terry Bradshaw? Wasn't that the school where no. he went to? That was Louisiana Tech, so you missed there too. Louisiana Tech. All right, that's the same thing. Keep digging. Uh, they, they beat they beat our Kansas. They beat our Kansas. <laughs> our Kansas, as you call it, lost to North Texas by like thirty-one points. Go ahead, continue. All right, Missouri's not a bad football program. They're not a good one either. Tennessee, Tennessee has had is its horrible. moments. I mean, no, I, Tennessee I, moments I are they're like two and six right now, or two and seven. Go ahead. All right, no, I, that's that's it. Okay, let me look at who Clemens play. Who's Clemens? Clemens beat Georgia Southern. Whoa, there's the power, thirty-six to seven. They beat Georgia Tech, about the same as playing Mississippi, probably about that same. They beat Syracuse. Yeah, Syracuse uh, is in the well, top twenty-five. Yeah, they're top 25. They beat Wake Forest, which Indiana beat Wake Forest, didn't they? No, Indiana beat Virginia, no, which is the best team in the yeah, United States. Yeah, oh, okay, Notre Dame, beat, Notre Dame beat Wake Forest. Okay. NC State, they beat. A top 25. They beat Florida team. State. Florida they're not ranked right now. Top 25. Team. NC Who is State's it? not NC ranked State? right now. Florida State's not ranked right now. NC State is. Uh, they're going to play Louisville. They're going to play Boston College. They're going to play Boston Duke. College is Chuck ranked. They got an easier. They've got no, an they easier don't. schedule in the last four games. Oh, come on. Outside of the LSU game, I would rather play Auburn in Boston College right now. Where's Auburn no. ranked? Auburn is – Auburn's not ranked right now. Okay. Good enough, then. Well, they may be ranked in the top uh, – in, in the poll. Let me see here. No, they're not in the poll at all. No, they're not. So they're out they, entirely. They're like a 500 team this year. Right. Yeah. But they're a dangerous football team. Like I said, it's, it's yeah, when Indiana Purdue plays. Dangerous. I, no, wait a second. If Alabama is the number one team in the country, <sighs> Auburn can't be considered dangerous. How can you consider them dangerous just because they're rivals? Big deal. If Alabama's the best team in the country, they'll have no problem with them. Okay. I disagree. Well, you're wrong. So, when we got LSU... <laughs> And Notre Dame. I love how you say that. That is so great. I, it just cracks me up. Yeah, I'm wrong. That is true. Um, no, you're wrong. Well, I, I, uh, I, I, yeah, you just said. Agree you with just me said than you. Yeah. More people agree with me than you because Alabama's still ranked number one. No, they don't. That just means the the NCAA, who is corrupt, agrees with you, which then means you're corrupt. All right. So next up, you've got Notre Dame or LSU. Um, a lot of people complain, especially Notre Dame fans, that they think Notre Dame should be ahead of LSU. What do you think? Well, they actually are in the rankings. I mean, in the, no, in the top 25, not, they've got... Nobody cares about the top 25. Well, that's the AP top 25. The only thing that matters is the college football go. rankings. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I was surprised to see that, that... Uh, that Notre Dame was ranked below LSU. Um, but I think that's going to rectify itself when they play Alabama. So I'm not too worried about that. But no, the point is, right now, who should be ranked higher? Because we could sit here all day right. and not talk about anything if you want. Because the only thing you're talking about is what could happen in the future. And it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is where you sit right now. The future doesn't matter until you get there. I'd make a team um, up with that on it. Go ahead. I I think that probably Notre Dame should be ranked ahead. Really, them. really, a team that barely beat Vanderbilt, that barely beat Ball State. Uh, they got a win against Stanford. Where's Stanford ranked on the college football playoff? Uh, well, I don't have. Why am I not getting the college? For, I all I have is the AP top twenty-five. Where are the rankings well, for? Where's those? Stanford in, a, uh, in the AP top twenty-five? They weren't in the AP Top 25. Thank you. So they've lost a couple games since. So right now, what's Notre Dame's best win? Stanford. Stanford, who's not in the Top 25. Um, LSU, on the other hand, if you look at their schedule, every team they've played is above 500. Their one loss was at Florida, or to Florida, who was ranked number 11. So I, I, LSU deserves to be there. They've played maybe the toughest schedule in the country. Every team they've played is above 500. Look up LSU's schedule and go through it. They okay. beat Auburn. Too. I will. Just... 
Yeah. Okay, here are the playoff rankings. Committee top 25 rankings. Yeah. Who does LSU have left to play? LSU? Well, they play Alabama this week. So, I mean, if they beat Alabama, they're in pretty good shape because right now in the SEC East, you could possibly, it's good, it looks like it's going to be Kentucky or Georgia, possibly Florida, but Kentucky or Georgia, I think, basically playing in Kentucky this weekend to win the East. And then LSU or Alabama goes and plays Kentucky for the SEC championship game, which is something nobody ever thought was even conceivable. But when I look at those two teams, I've changed my mind on a lot of things just from looking at the schedules these teams have played. And LSU, to me, I mean, every team they've played is a solid football team. There's no Louisiana Lafayette's on their schedule. And I, I think there's a lot to be said for that, plus the fact that LSU, I mean, they beat the uh, hell out of Georgia, who's like six or seven, and they beat them by two But L- LSU's touchdowns. got a loss. LSU's lost a game. Oh, do they? Who did they lose to? Who did they lose to? They lost to Florida, who was number 11. Okay. So they lost a close game by like six or seven points to Florida. But they have also the operative won. word is they lost. Why? Why is that the they operative lost. word? Because the only thing if you got the Notre three, Dame is Notre Dame should not shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't the number three ranked team beat the number twelve ranked team? Uh, well, they so were like, ranked at the, the rank? time, but they so were why number is Florida 11. not ranked number three? Why is Florida six not ranked two? number three? Because Florida's lost twice, yeah. and they're not very good. LSU lost a game. It'll happen. The thing is this. I, I would rather have a the better one-loss team over an undefeated team that has beaten Stanford. And so you see no hope for Central Florida having any run at all? No, no I think Central Florida does. I, I think this. I think the committee ranked them much higher than what they deserved. I, I think they should have well, been 18 to 20. Yeah. Because you can't change the fact that when you look at Central Florida's schedule, they have not played one team with a record better than 500. Now, <laughs> if you get a bunch of teams with one or two losses, I, 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 I am interested to see how this works, but, but the whole problem here is the four-team playoff system. If it's an eight-team playoff system, Central Florida can get in. Central Florida's not getting in with the schedule they play. I mean, by the time they're done, the best teams they'll have played are Temple, Cincinnati, and South Florida. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think the, the, the problem with Central Florida is it being, ended up possibly being 24-0 in the last two years. That makes the argument for more than four teams, more than it makes an argument that they belong in the tournament. Yes, that's what I'm saying. At I mean, four because teams. if yeah, you get it, eight teams, yeah. we find out how good they are. At four teams, right. we're it, never going to know. Yeah, right. You're never going to know because I agree with you. They're not going to make the top four, but they it, it winning going undefeated two years in a row in college football for any program uh, deserves a chance to play for the national championship. I I believe so. Any any bowl eligible uh, D1 college football program. Uh, but the biggest argument, like I said, the biggest argument they make is just that this, the four teams is not enough teams to justify picking the real national champion through a tournament process. You go back to the rankings, you mean more. You're still in a position where the whole reason for creating a playoff system was to eliminate the the probability of a rankings team winning the national championship and letting a team win it, actually win the championship, as in March Madness. Well, see, the problem is with four teams. You're still relying too heavily on the rankings to pick the national champion. And, and when you look at this... I mean, you got a team like Kentucky. Where's Kentucky on? Uh, They're ninth. Teams? They're ninth. They're ninth. All right. If yeah. you look at Kentucky, they beat Florida. That's a good win. Um, they beat Mississippi State, who was ranked at the time. They lost to Texas A&M. Um, so there's What's not everybody a whole else lot here. Saying? Yeah, there, there, there's not a whole lot here. Um, I don't see how they get to be number nine that way. If they beat Georgia. I got no problem with them being in the top six or seven if they beat Georgia. But then, typical SEC, they play Tennessee, and then for some reason they're playing middle Tennessee. I mean, if you're an SEC school, and the same thing goes for 
you know, Alabama, who plays the Citadel, I think, that week. Why in the hell are you playing these teams? I, I, the SEC is supposed to be this great conference. And it, it, it is really good. It's probably the best conference this year just because there's actually four legit top 25 teams there. But, I mean, why are you playing Middle Tennessee State on November the 17th? At least Kentucky is going who's to doing Middle this? Tennessee. Kentucky. But at least they're going to Middle Tennessee. Well, I, I, I think the mentality there is I saw where Alabama, I think, plays the Citadel. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, that's a that's kind of what you call a bye week for them. Yeah, well, I think they, going they into the playoffs, bye week. week. I don't need One to see Alabama week. play the Citadel. Well, I think they, they they want to get their 12 games in or whatever many games they play. They want to get those games in. But I think they going into it, knowing they're going into the college football, their own conference playoffs, I see games like Citadel as being just a – we can rest our – heal our injuries, rest our players, our starters, take a week off, and still play, still stay sharp to some degree, but not risk a high probability of one of our star players getting hurt or maybe not even play in the whole game and let them rest. So that's just a product of organizing and planning and playing for a national championship more than it is building a tough schedule to go play. Yeah, and I've got no problem. If Alabama stays undefeated, they should be number one because they'll have beaten LSU. Um, and, and Clemson, when you look at them, the ACC is so weak. Right now, they'd, play, they'd be playing Virginia, who lost to Indiana in the ACC championship game. Um, when right. you go a little lower, I think is where you've got some more, shall we say, interesting teams like Georgia. Um, Georgia has a schedule that I think can get them to where they need to be if they can win out also. Um, the other question at the top four, though, is if LSU beats Alabama and with their strength of schedule, do they jump up to number one over top of Clemson this weekend? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, that's a tough call. That's a tough call. I still think the one loss is going to keep them below Clemson. As long as Clemson stays undefeated, yeah, I think I, Clemson I know will. You, you keep buying into this one loss thing, but when you look at it, at the time LSU played these teams, this is who they've beaten. They beat, at the time, number eight, Miami, number seven, Auburn, number two, Georgia, number 22, Mississippi State. I mean, that, to me, even with the loss, I mean, it, it just makes it more impressive. They, they've played one, two, three. After this week, they'll have played four teams that at the time they played them were ranked in the top ten. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think Clemson's schedule is that impressive either. I think it's just more impressive than Alabama right now. Yeah, I, unfortunately, we're just in a situation where um, – I'm going to print this out. Um, we still are too reliant on the rankings to determine who's going to play and who's not. And until you move beyond four teams, it's not going to go away. Yeah, but that's, that's all we that's got. So that's what we got to discuss. Right, so the point is this. I don't necessarily want four undefeated teams in the championship. I want the four best teams. So right now, Michigan is a team that if they were to win out, I think is undoubtedly one of the four best teams. They weren't at the start of the year. They had Shea Patterson as a new quarterback. They went in Notre Dame, and they got mud stomped. I mean, it wasn't as close as the 24-17 to 17 score. They got a couple cheap ones at the end. And when I look at it, though, Michigan right now with Patterson, the way he's playing, and they're getting a couple players back here shortly, I think they're going to go to Ohio State and beat Ohio State. I think they're going to win the well, Big Ten Championship, and I think Michigan's going to be one of those four teams at the end of the year. I, I don't disagree with you. I, I, Michigan's got to go through Penn State and Ohio State, and then they're going to have to play somebody from the other side. So they're going to, they're going to play three. They got Rutgers and in Indiana in, in the last four games, which should be two easy victories for them. Um, but they're going to have to go through Penn State at, at Happy Valley. Yeah, and that's they a got tough Michigan. one. That's a tough one. That's, that's coming up this week. Uh, this Saturday, actually. That's this Saturday. And then, um, then they'll have Michigan takes on Ohio State at Michigan, which is good. Um, but then they'll have to go through Northwestern or Iowa, whoever wins the other side, Wisconsin. I, I don't know, but 
you know, when you're playing for a championship, a conference championship, it, it's always, like I said, it's, it's a little more emotional than it is just playing a regular season game. So they've got a decent schedule. If they went out, I believe they're a top four team. Yeah, and I think Georgia is another one. We talked about the SEC. I think people are missing this one because if they beat Kentucky, Kentucky is ranked number nine right now. They're number six. Then they play Auburn. Of course, they've got the SEC November the 17th UMass game. And then they play a Georgia Tech team that's not that good. That would put them in against probably Alabama or LSU in the SEC championship. So if they could beat Kentucky, win the SEC championship game, I think Georgia's going to be in again. Yeah, I just think it's going to jumble usually. I'm, I'm not. I'm still not of the volition that Notre Dame's going to stay undefeated. There is Notre Dame got. Notre no, Dame's no, got to play I, Northwestern. I think, I think Notre Dame loses to Northwestern this weekend. I think they beat Northwestern because they're playing at home. Florida State. How good is Florida State this year? They're terrible. Are they? Okay. They've got to play Syracuse, which is ranked. And, I mean, they've got to go out, come out here to L.A. and play USC. And I know USC is no good, but that's, again, that's one of those rivalries. No, USC, that... USC is the, I mean, if you look at Washington State, where's Washington State from last night's rankings? They're like number eight. Um, let me see. Washington State is, yeah, number eight. Yeah, USC beat Washington State 39-36 to September the 21st. Yeah. So it's not impossible that they could pull that out. And no. if you look at Washington State, they still got a game against Washington. They'll play the Pac-12 championship. Unless a lot of things happen, though, I don't see a team from the Pac-12 getting in this. Um, because what I think you'd look at it, I, the top 10 or 11 teams have a legitimate shot. After that, I don't think there's much shot at all. I think the top eight. I think the top eight, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Georgia, Michigan, LSU, Notre Dame, Clemson and Alabama have a legitimate shot. Well, and I think this, when you look at Notre Dame, I think Northwestern is going to be a tough game. They play Syracuse in New York at Yankee Stadium, which is a tough game. And then the next week they play USC. So the only yeah. soft cupcake game they got is Florida State. That's at home. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I really don't see what Brian Kelly involved in this equation, that they're going to win those four games. I don't either. I, I I just historically Notre Dame under this current coaching regime can find will find a way to take themselves out of it. Yeah, and, and plus they're yeah. playing some good teams, and we've already seen them struggle. I mean, they seem to be the kind of team to me that plays down to the comfort or to the competition. Right. Yeah, they're they're very capable. That's exactly that's a great analogy. They they play to their level of competition more so. Than any of the, that's what Alabama doesn't do. I mean, Alabama's wins. I know they haven't played anybody, but they've crushed everybody that they've set on the field. No, but with. they haven't really played. So they're playing to their own level. The game, even if they played to those teams' levels. Uh, I uh, I understand that. I understand that. And but they are crushing everybody that they step on the field with, for the most part. I mean, they haven't had a challenge to speak of yet. But yeah. the, the first ranking doesn't surprise me at all. I think they've got the top. Six, seven teams, right? I'm, you know, I don't know how. What do you think of OSU? Are they a playoff caliber team or not? That's what I was going to and next. Then, um, yeah. With OSU, defensively, they're not very good. The resume is not very good. Um, the team just has problems. They, they beat Oregon State. They beat Rutgers. Who doesn't? They, they struggled with TCU, which is like the tenth best team in the Big Twelve this year. They blew out Tulane. They won a one-point game against Penn State because of Penn State's coaching decisions. They had a little bit of trouble with IU. They had a little bit of trouble with Minnesota. They get blown out by Purdue. Um, they will play Nebraska this week, which Nebraska is not very good. They should get a win there. But Ohio State travels to Michigan State, which could be a tough game. At Maryland, I mean, they're better than both of those teams, but either one of those games I could see them having trouble with and maybe dropping one. Um, then you got to play Michigan, and then you're going to have to play Northwestern or Iowa or one of those teams in the East for the Big Ten Championship. Right. I, I just don't see where their resume is good enough. I mean, you, you've got not just a loss to Purdue. You've got a 29-point loss to Purdue. And Yeah, that was just slacking, too. I mean, Yeah, and their best win is against Penn State. Outside of that, they've really beaten nobody else. 
And you know, it's not like Michigan State and Maryland are top 15 teams that are going to help their resume. But those are two away games. And Maryland beat Texas earlier this year at Maryland. Michigan State, I think, beat Northwestern last weekend. So it's not beyond comprehension. They lose one or two of those games. I, I think this all goes back to the fact that people are overlooking how important the Urban Meyer situation was at the start of the year because it is a distraction. They're also overlooking, you know, you lose Bosa because he's decided he doesn't want to risk it. I mean, that's a big loss for this team. It's not right now, but it could be in the future when they could have. So when I look at it, I think Ohio State's dead in the water. I, I don't think there's much chance there. The team that's more interesting to me that I think may have a chance is Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Uh, I'm looking at their schedule right now, yeah. Yeah, because you look at Oklahoma, they're seven and one right now. Um, they beat FAU, no big deal. UCLA, no big deal. But they beat a good Iowa State team. Iowa State's a team that's only four and three, but they should be in the top twenty-five. They beat Army in overtime, which at the time looked like a shocker. But now Army's sitting. I think they're six and two or seven and two. They're not a bad football team. Um, they lost a three-point game to Texas, which was a great game. They blew out TCU, the same TCU that Ohio State struggled with. They blew out Kansas State. They played Texas Tech this week. They go play Oklahoma State, who's not what they have been. Then they get Kansas. Then they go to West Virginia, and they get a Big 12 championship game. So I think still that things could break break right for Oklahoma, and Oklahoma could probably or could possibly get in. Yeah, I agree. I like Oklahoma better than Ohio State, definitely. But – and then you've got Florida. If you're going to look at Florida right now sitting at 11, I don't think they're that good, but they are better than they have been the last few years. And when you – what the heck? Oh, dang. I don't know what that was. Did you hear that, Steve? I heard some faint introductory yeah, music in the background. or something. Um, all right, so... Oh, it's Halloween. Know? It's Halloween. Yeah, everything's freaky and creepy to Steve. Steve gets afraid on Halloween, but it'll be all right, Steve. Um, Washington, Washington doesn't play strong on a schedule to help themselves out. Well, Washington's out anyway. Games. Washington State's the team that's in there, but they would be... Washington State, too, I meant. That's what I meant. Help to yeah. get there. If you look at right. Florida, they lost to Kentucky. Not a bad loss now. They beat Mississippi State. They beat LSU, but they get blown out by Georgia. Um, so they may have done themselves in last week with the Georgia loss. So I, they got Missouri, Idaho, of course, on November the 17th. Florida State, South Carolina. So if they, so, I, I think Florida's pretty much out of it. So when we look at this, I think the team Top seven teams. I, I think the top nine. I'll put Kentucky in there because if Kentucky beats Georgia – and then beats at Alabama in the SEC championship game. They're definitely there. So there's definitely I, I think there's more of a way for number nine Kentucky to get in than there is for number eight the, Washington State to get in right now, or even number seven Oklahoma. So you would say top seven teams only put move Kentucky out of Oklahoma. Well, I, 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 really I think consider, Oklahoma still has I don't, an outside I don't think shot. Washington State has a chance. I, I, I do. don't think Washington State has a well, chance. There's things that could happen here. I mean, we know Notre Dame could lose. Michigan could lose to Ohio State. Georgia, out of these three SEC teams, at least two of them are going to take themselves out of the running right there. You know, LSU right, could because they're going to play up. each other. Yeah, LSU could come up, crack Alabama. Um, you could end up with an LSU-Georgia SEC championship game. The loser there is probably out because I don't think they've let it too, long, too many two-loss teams into the Final Four. So then you're down to LSU, Clemson, Michigan, and Georgia's already taken themselves out, then all of a sudden, Oklahoma and Washington State could be in the conversation. And I think all those yeah. are possible things that could happen, but you need three of those possible things to happen, which makes it a little bit more improbable. I'll tell you what, Steve, have yeah. you noticed that my use of the English language has really improved? Um, I went from impossible to improbable, and I think I used them in a correct form in that sentence. Uh, that's good. I You're know. getting outside of uh, 
Lawrenceburg in more often. Like, apparently. So now if we can just teach you how to these, spell. Traveling we'll three hours to all these high school football games that you play in, you're, you're getting a cool culture and getting out. Not really, and, because and, I don't think you get much culture in Columbus, Ohio, or Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, well. Do you? I grew up in Indianapolis. So I'm know. doing fine. Yeah, your culture is off the charts. Where have I where have I not shown culture? Where have you shown culture? Hmm? I'm not even going to go there. I'm okay. not even going to go there. There is none. Now, there is something I wanted to bring up outside of the college football thing. Um, did you right. see where DJ Durkin was reinstated? That was the University of Maryland. I mean... They reinstated football coach D.J. Durkin. And that was the one Jordan McNair, the Maryland football player, that suffered a heat stroke after a May 29th workout. Uh, Durkin returned to work Tuesday after University System of Maryland's Board of Regents recommended his reinstatement after reviewing an investigative report into the culture of Durkin's program. The, ter- the third-year coach has been on paid administrative lead since August 11th. Um, basically, I don't, I don't even know how to explain this other than he had a whole lot to do with a kid who was under his tutelage dying in the University of Maryland, even though the president and everyone went to the parents of the kid and, 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 you know, said, we're sorry. They just gave him his job back. They reinstated him. I, I have no rhyme or reason what the NCAA does anymore, how they regulate, how they rule, what what decisions they make. Everything's based on predicate. Everything's predicated. Let me use one of your big words: predicated on money. And what's his contract like? What are they paying him? What's his buyout going to be? You're going to have to hire a new coach. Uh, you know, it's morally, it's probably not a good decision for the university to bring him back. Uh, if nothing else, just to make a statement that we won't tolerate our coaching staffs, putting our players in those kinds of positions. But financially, it probably was the best option for him rather than buying them out of his contract and then having to go and find him to go to search committee, which costs millions of dollars these days, and then coming up with another coach they've got to offer big money to. They've already got to come in and clean up the program. I mean, they're a team right now that's probably going to play in a bowl game. I mean, the interim coach yeah. could have just continued to coach it. It doesn't matter. They should just fold the program if they're going to there, let this guy come back. Sadly, it. sadly, Mike, there's nothing anymore about the NCAA involvement in anything or college athletics that surprises me anymore. Well, I can tell you I, this. Nothing, so, no. Maryland student body president Jonathan Allen told the ESPN that students are outraged by the board's decision. Allen will introduce emergency legislation at a student government association meeting Wednesday night that will call for university president Wallace Lowe to fire Durkin. So I think in the end, they'll probably put enough pressure on him where, you know, the Maryland administration will end up firing him. Because you well, know that's how that, that might things be. get done. Yeah. And I mean, that, that might be. I, you know, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't know what to tell you because it, it just happens. I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me that he's back. So, it doesn't me either. Actually, it surprised me yeah. because I figured they'd already fired him. You know, I didn't even look into it that much just because I figured it was a no-brainer. But I shouldn't have thought that with the NCAA. Um, all right. Final well, I don't thought. even know how, how much ahead. of this really falls on the NCAA. How much of this really falls? On the NCAA, really well, truthfully, I would say this. Other than they could have stepped up and said, could, "That's exact." That's what I'm going to say. They could step up and they could okay. put a stop to it. Right. The the the, 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 the deal is, is that there's no licensing for coaching, no regulations that coaches are ob- ob- obliged to honor. They don't get punished. They just get fired. They don't get suspended. They can jump. They can do everything that athletes, student athletes, cannot do. Uh, and it, it's, but, you know, yeah, I thought I just really can't even think of an intelligent thing to say about bringing him back. All right. Um, anything else you want to talk about today, Steve? No, 
No, really, I think the football polls are big news. So right now, who's your, who's your national champion right now? If you pick one right now. Who do I think is going to win the national championship? Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> I mean, it's going to change. It's going to change because it's, this many teams going to play each other. I mean, so it's going to change. But right now, who's your national champion? I'll throw it out there. Mine's Alabama. I, I don't think – somebody's got to beat them before I, I'm going to turn turn sour on Alabama. I'm not a big fan of Alabama. I think LSU They're not my favorite Alabama program. this week. Okay. All right. But um, that, does that mean the LSU is your national champion? No, it doesn't. I would actually, if I had to go with one right now, I don't like – I like Clemson. I think Trevor Lawrence is a really good quarterback, and their defensive front is as good as been seen in college football. So just because of the D-line and the quarterback, I, I would lean a little bit towards Clemson. It still worries me about how weak the ACC is. And it, it's why I think Alabama loses to LSU this week. It's not that I think LSU is better, but it's in Death Valley. And LSU has played six legitimately good teams. And Alabama has played maybe one or two, which is pushing it. So I, I just think LSU is more battle-tested. I think they'll be more ready to play this weekend. It doesn't mean that I think Alabama isn't the better team. It's just I think that... This sets up to me as LSU wins this game. Okay, so who's your national champion? I just said Clemson. Right, Clemson right now. Okay, yeah. uh, it's going to change. It's maybe, it's going to change because either LSU or Alabama are going to drop. Well, and I don't know that it's not going to change LSU mine because Alabama. it doesn't matter to me if LSU or Alabama is in either way. I think Clemson beats either one of them. The team to me, the only team I could see changing my mind about, and this may sound crazy, is Michigan. Because I really think Jim Harbaugh is a hell of a football coach. He's got Shea Patterson now at quarterback. The defense is starting to play really well. Um, I know they lost the game early in the season to Notre Dame. But that was also the first game of the season. And I don't think Patterson was really comfortable with running the offense Michigan runs. So, to me, my sleeper is Michigan. Just because I think that if they get past Penn State, I think they're going to win out. That'll put them in the Final Four. And once they're there, I like Harbaugh. Um, I, I don't know if they could beat an Alabama, but I think with Shea Patterson they have a chance. And I really, like I said, I think Jim Harbaugh has proven that he is a better football coach than anybody in college football coaching, including Nick Saban and Urban Meyer. And the reason I say that is this. Nick Saban and Urban Meyer are great recruiters. Nick Saban tried the NFL and failed. Jim Harbaugh tried the NFL and ended up in the Super Bowl. So that tells me, X's and O's wise, I'm going to take Jim Harbaugh over him all day long. Now, recruiting wise, that's Nick Saban. But when we get to a Final Four where we got two or three weeks to prepare, <laughs> don't be surprised if a team like Michigan with Harbaugh jumps up and beats Alabama. Yeah, that's a good call. I, Michigan's definitely the sleeper team sitting in the top eight right now. But they got to beat Penn State, and that's not going to be easy in right. Valley Valley. No. And they've got to they gotta beat Ohio State. It's yeah. not a good thing they They'll play Ohio, Ohio State. Ohio then they've got to go win the Big Ten. Ohio State does not have any defense. And there are deeper issues at the universe, at, at Ohio State, at the Ohio State University. The Ohio people, State University. Than what people even have a clue about. I do, there's yeah. a lot of dirty stuff that goes on at that university. Does Notre Dame have a chance to win the next championship at all? I just don't see how they could get in a game with Clemson or a game with Alabama or even a rematch with Michigan. I mean, like I said, do do you really believe that off this first game, Brian Kelly beats Jim Harbaugh in the season opener? I I just I think Harbaugh makes the adjustments to beat Kelly. Plus, they've got a quarterback now in Shea Patterson who's comfortable. And the only problem is this, even if you beat them, you're still at some point going to have to play a big physical Alabama team, a big physical LSU team, a big physical Clemson team. And I don't think they're going to be able to do that. I, I think they're going to have a hard time with the Northwestern Syracuse games. I mean, Northwestern and Syracuse are solid teams. Northwestern's got Clayton Thurston, who's one of the best quarterbacks nobody's ever heard of in college football, who I think will someday play in the NFL. And Northwestern's going to give them all kind of hell. And if they play like they did against Pitt or Ball State at home, Northwestern will beat them. 
I mean, Northwestern's a team that's proven they can beat almost anybody. They've also proven they can lose to almost anybody. But we've seen this even back to the early 90s, where you think Notre Dame's about to win a national championship, and they lose to a Boston College at home, or they lose to Tennessee at home, right. or they lose to Navy at home. They've done it for the last two decades, even under Lou Holtz right. at the end no, they were doing that's it. That's what I'm saying, yeah. 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 I think this. I think defensively they're good. I think Book's good. They've got a good running game. They've got all the pieces. I just don't think that they have the depth of teams like Alabama, Clemson, and LSU. And I don't think I offensive line-wise they could hold up against the Alabama or Clemson front lines. Now, if they play I them, I may cheer for them because I used to be a huge Notre Dame fan. I just – once they got Lou Holtz, it kind of soured me in the whole thing. And the Brian Kelly thing makes it even worse since I live close to Cincinnati. And I know what Brian Kelly did to that program when he up and left when they were ranked third in the country and getting ready to play the Sugar Bowl or against Florida. Yeah. No, I'm a Notre Dame fan too, but I, I just don't have a lot of faith in Kelly and that team to stay stable for the last four games. No. And so. I just – I don't know. The, I, I, I don't believe know. them to be the most vulnerable of the four of the, of the five top teams. Yeah, I think them and, and Michigan. And you, I, I'm really uh, the, the only team really that's not vulnerable right now to me is Clemson, and that's because the rest. Yeah, of the I game agree. Is so because, easy. right, right, because LSU's got to play Alabama, so th- there's vulnerability there in one of those two teams. One of those two teams. And again, I, does Al- yeah. if, Al- if LSU beats Alabama, does Alabama fall out of the top four? They should. Because when you look at them, do they? there's nothing else to rest your resume on. The thing is this. If they lose a three-point game in Death Valley, they're probably still in the top four. If they lose by 17 if in they, Death Valley, then maybe they drop to seven or eight. If they lose to LSU, then they become not eligible to play for the SEC championship, correct? It doesn't matter. They didn't play for it last year. But they didn't, did they? No, they lost to but they lost Auburn earlier played Georgia. Year. Yeah, and yeah no, they Alabama didn't lose left. earlier. They lost to Auburn, lost later. which is even yeah. later in the season. That was the last week in the regular season of college football outside of the Army-Navy game the week later. It's the last game that was played. That's why I'm saying uh, if, they, if they lose to LSU, I'm not even sure Alabama falls out of the top four. No, it's according to how they lose. And, yeah. you know, maybe Notre Dame, you know, beats Northwestern by 30. Clemson blows somebody out. LSU already beat Bama. And Michigan goes to Happy Valley and wins by double digits. Then I don't see how they could keep them in the top four. But the problem is they'll drop them at five and just wait for one of those teams to lose, and then they'll jump back in. Lose, right? They'll jump right back in. Exactly. But the yeah, the, the most interesting take of all of this is the Kentucky Wildcats against the Georgia Bulldogs, because I think whoever wins that game this weekend, they're one win away from being in the college playoffs. And that would be like Indiana winning the Big Ten if Kentucky won the SEC. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it, it would be yeah, it'd be a shocker. There's no doubt. I mean, I don't think it'd be a shocker. It'd be something we're not accustomed to seeing, which makes it a shocker. No, it'd be a shocker because uh, it's Kentucky. Yeah. I mean, Kentucky's like Indiana. They schedule week at the start. They'll be like three and one, four and one. They'll get your hopes up that maybe they're going to make a bowl game and then they'll win like one league game and end up with five wins and miss out. Or they'll yeah. get two wins. You'll get all excited because they went six and six and they get busted in like the Ford GE Blue Bonnet Carefree Bowl or something. Well, at least unlike Indiana, they'll be going to a bowl game. Well, yeah. Well, Indiana could. <laughs> they went out. They have to win. <laughs> they have to win out. <laughs> And it doesn't matter who they're playing. It's still funny when you think of Indiana winning out of anything. Well, they got to play Michigan, so that kind of eliminates that that, that theory yeah. right there. Yeah. So that kind of takes that out of the loop. Yeah. But anyway, well, yeah, it, this will be interesting to follow for the next four weeks. You know, with Indiana, they could possibly beat Michigan and then lose the other games. Yeah, Indiana could do anything that's amazing. Yeah. You. They'll beat Michigan by like so. twenty five and lose every other game and still end up five and seven and miss. But But we should not be talking about Indiana right now. No, because Tom be Allen should be fired because he sucks. Yeah, but the last okay. good coach they had was Bill Mallory and he got fired. Yeah. And he didn't suck. 
All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap right. it up. We got an Indiana basketball weekly tonight, Steve? Yes, we do, on Halloween night. Oh, okay. IU so, kicks off their season tomorrow with an exhibition game against the uh, SIU. Southern so Illinois guess, or Southern, Southern Indiana University. Um, Southern so Indiana I guess, University. I think tonight I'm going to dress up like a moron, so I'm going to wear my Kentucky University T-shirt and all those clothes. Um, all right, guys, okay. so you can check out Indiana Basketball Weekly tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern on thegruelingtruth.net. If you're a Kentucky fan and I offended you, I really don't care. Um, you can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere you find sports podcasts, you'll find The Grilling Truth. And if you are a Kentucky fan, do remember that I did spend like 15 minutes more than any other show talking about your chances to make the college football playoffs. So for Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.